everyone. I'm Todd Bronski. I'm with LJ Hose of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs, formerly of the Baltimore Orioles and the Houston Astros. Now, LJ, drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in the 2008 draft, but you had a really good offer to go to North Carolina, and that's a really good baseball program over there. Do you think because the Orioles were your hometown team, that kind of helped in persuading your decision to play pro ball rather than maybe if it's another team, the decision wouldn't be as uh, difficult? Uh, definitely. Um, just from being at home with the Baltimore Orioles and being able to have the opportunity to play, you know, all their minor league affiliates were, you know, pretty much 45 minutes, 30 minutes. Some of them were in my backyard, you know, so being able to be at home, see my family and you know, be around my family a lot. It was, it was definitely something that went into the decision and it made the decision a lot easier. Absolutely. Now you made your major league debut at the end of the 2012 season. Uh, do you remember what it, the first time you were in the big leagues, the first day, what it was like? Did everything just seem bigger and better, so to speak? Uh, it was kind of just surreal. Um, it was just something you have worked on, worked for my whole life, and you know it was a dream of me playing on Camden Yards, playing for the Orioles growing up, and you know it was pretty much a dream come true. Then you know to have someone I looked up to, my, my favorite player at the time, Adam Jones, being in the same clubhouse at the same time, and you know him basically just guided me and leading me through my first day. You know we had pretty much I had met him in 2008, but then we really had developed a relationship in 12, and we became you know like he's like my big brother to this day. So being able to be around him and have him. You know, just pretty much guide me throughout my first part of my career. It was, it was, it was something I couldn't ask for, something I couldn't have dreamed of. That's awesome. Now, 2013, the Orioles called you up at the end of July. You played that one game, but then a few days later, they traded you the Houston Astros. And ironically, the Astros were playing the Orioles uh, during that series. Before we even get to the baseball side of it, take me through how they broke the news to you about the trade and just the transition of going from that clubhouse to that clubhouse. Did you walk into the Astros clubhouse with Orioles bag and Oriole clothes on? Uh, yeah, actually, um, so the night before I went to uh, Beyonce had a concert in D.C., so I went to the concert with uh, a couple of buddies and Adam, his wife, we all went to the concert. So that night I spent the night at his house. The next day I woke up and, you know, pretty much we were watching MLB Network, both of us, and we were just talking. He was like, man, you're going to get traded today. And I didn't believe him. You know, I was like, whatever, whatever. So I ended up getting to the stadium. I'm on the field doing early work, and they called me in. They're like, uh, yeah, sit down. Something's about to happen. And, you know, pretty much it was like 3.59 in like 20 seconds, and my name crossed like I had just been traded. So uh, and then I had to end up calling my parents, letting them know what's going on. Then they had a press conference there, and you know, pretty much just took all my Orioles stuff and walked to the Astros locker room and then had to get ready for a game that night. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Now, playing that game that night, um, obviously against your former team, did the fans recognize that maybe you were just with them on their team and now you're on the fo opposing side? Uh, yeah, a lot of the fans, um, you know, I had already knew had a lot of family and friends there. You know, a lot of people that locally that I had known growing up were there at the game. And then my parents actually went home and took the off their Orioles stuff off and tried to find some blue and orange <laughs> real quick to, to wear to the game. So it was pretty cool. But, uh, you know, just have, being able to go through that and have my family there. It was the first time I've ever been traded in you know, a situation like that. Don't know what to expect going to a new team and new team at the major league level. So it's like you don't go up through the minor league system and learn their their way of how they do things. So I got to jump in at right major league level. And being able to have the opportunity I had with Houston is something I couldn't ask for. You know, I came in right away and they played me every day. And, you know, pretty much like, here, you go out there and play. And the next year they let me start opening day. And those memories I'll never forget. Absolutely. Like you just touched on, the Astros really gave you your first extensive stay in the major leagues. Um, you know, that year you had really good success with them. Even that, I remember the West Coast Series against L.A., you had a really good series against the Angels. Uh, can you speak on maybe the Astros organization, how the coaching staff, you know, what you liked about them, how they utilized you to be successful in the major leagues? Uh, I liked it a lot. We were all young at the time, all the guys we had there. And even Altuve, who was established, most established player we had, was still, you know, 20, and I got there 24, 23, 24 years old, the same age as me. So, you know, being able to just grow with those guys and being able to go to the two, three years of seeing us grow, and then 15, being able to make the playoffs that year. And, you know, just seeing us grow and develop into the team that, that they are now. I mean, you know, I was part of there when some of those guys were coming up, Correa and Altuve and, you know, playing with Marwin and, and Springer, those guys. I mean, they have unbelievable talent over there, and they've, they've done a great job of, of, of developing them and developing all the guys they got. You know, whoever goes down over there, they, they bring somebody else up, and they're, and they're doing well. So, you know, Jeff Luna has done a great job with the, with the Astros organization over there. You know, they, they're going to be dangerous for years to come. Absolutely. Obviously, you've played a lot of games in the minor leagues, and but you've played a good share amount of games in the major leagues. Do you ever get comfortable in the major leagues, or is it impossible to get comfortable in the major leagues? Because you know, if you don't succeed for a few games, you know, you could be sent down. 
Uh, you definitely you want to be comfortable. I mean, that's the way of playing baseball, the way you're going to succeed. But it's definitely tough, you know, when you're not performing, you're like, oh, they're going to send me down, they're not going to send me down. But you got to worry about the things you can't control. And that's kind of things, as a young guy, I got wrapped up into is like, well, I'm not playing or I'm not getting the bad, so I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Instead of going out there and just preparing every day and making myself ready. That, so when the opportunity comes, you know, when they, they say, oh, you should go get a bat, and you're about to hit here, to, I'm prepared for it situation. And, you know, sometimes the young guys would let that get in our way of, you know, we're, well, why should we be playing over this guy? Should yeah. we doing this? Should we be doing that? Well, do what you can do to help the team out. At the major league level, there, it's not about prospects anymore. It's not about that. They're, everyone's there for one common goal, and that's to win the World Series. And, you know, they're, they're going to weed out the guys who are there for themselves, you know. And, you know, you can't be there for yourself. you got to be there for the team and whatever you can do to help the team win. Yeah, most definitely. Now, in the offseason in 2015, you were actually traded back to the Orioles organization. Was that a little surreal to go back to that organization? And you unfortunately didn't get called up to the major leagues with them last year, but did you take the same mindset you spoke on earlier to control what you control and whatever happens, happens? No, I kind of got in my, my, my way last year. Um, just my attitude. Uh, just, you know, being upset of the playing time, being upset of what's going on situation, of you know, I'm out in my leagues, you know, they cut me the day of right before, you know, opening day is happening and, you know, I should be up there, I should be that. And it's, can't have that, you know, you're not going to be able to succeed. And if you don't go out there with a clear mind every day, focused on what your goals is, you know, you're not going to be able to have a good year. And unfortunately, my year last year wasn't the type of year, you know, I'm accustomed to having and people are accustomed to me to see. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a give and take, but, you know, I'm happy for the opportunity I have here and being able to still play the basic game of baseball. Absolutely. Now, like you mentioned, you're with the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs now in the Atlantic League. Um, how have you liked playing this league so far, and are you seeing a lot of familiar faces you've played against or with um, in this league? Uh, I've, I've liked it so far. You know, just the travel is amazing. <laughs> Being, this is one of our furthest trips, and it was six and a half hours, so it's, it's lovely. And, you know, my family was able to come watch you play uh, in Southern Maryland, so they're there every night pretty much. And even on the road, they, they've been able to come to – I think three or four trips so far so it's it's been great um, just being able to have them around and then definitely in this league you know playing with the guys on my team playing against yeah. other guys it's a lot of guys I've seen you know coming up through the minors some guys I played against in the big league so it's it's definitely cool to see a lot of guys still out here playing baseball and still doing it at a pretty high level I mean this league's pretty competitive you know some of the guys in here getting picked up going to AA and I remember in 2012 I was in Norfolk and Lou Ford just came yeah. from uh, the Atlantic League from Long Island and he played in AAA with us and then got called up to the big leagues with me in, in, in 12 so it's it's definitely some talent in here and you see guys that make it back and I think Rich Hill was one and yep. two that made it back so I mean, you definitely see some guys that make it back and you no know, just hope of playing a game of being you're still a professional baseball player and that's the thing that we've all dreamed for be playing being able to play this game professionally and we're still doing it and it's a child's game so you gotta go out there and Every day, and just have fun with it, and that's the main thing you see now. A lot of guys are just having fun. Definitely. Uh, finish up, uh, just some rapid type questions, kind of fun questions. Okay. Uh, favorite major league ballparks? Any that stand out? Uh, just multiple. I know. love Seattle. Um, I love the stadium. Um, I love just the water, the the, the atmosphere. The stadium is yeah. very very nice. Um, you know, I've always, I've always pretty I've hit pretty well there, so I like it pretty much. Uh, LA is another one. Uh, Anaheim. Where I, I love Anaheim. I usually do really well at Anaheim, so I like Anaheim a lot. Awesome. Um, any favorite, do you have any memorabilia pieces throughout your playing career? Like, do you have your first hit or first home run or any autographs from opposing players, I guess? Uh, I have a picture of my house. Well, I have Mariano's. I have a, uh, in 2013, I was lucky enough to play Mariano, his last game, wow. last series. And then the following year, 2014 opening day was Derek Jeter's last opening day so I have a picture actually I hit a home run opening day in 2014 I have a picture at my house like I'm like right at shortstop and like Derek Jeter's in the background and it's me running the bases so it's pretty one of my one of my sickest one of my sickest things I have that's awesome uh final question for you LJ I know you're a big basketball and NBA fan um a lot of moves in this offseason any teams you're excited about seeing uh next season well, I wish my man D Wade would got a Chicago. That's my favorite favorite player. <laughs> okay. um, but with what's going on now, I love that what Houston's doing. Um, if they can get Carmelo, uh, I read something on the way to the ballpark that uh, actually Cleveland's trying to get Derrick Rose. So if they they can pull up getting Derrick Rose and getting uh, Carmelo Anthony, I think Cleveland is going to be a favorite next year. I think. But uh, that West Coast, I mean, Golden State. What can you say about them? Yeah. You know, I think. Kevin Durant, if he's not the best player in the world right now, he will be at it by the end time of the next, in the next season. And, uh, I mean, I just think 
you know, having him and Steph Curry is unbelievable. Then you add Draymond and the way Klay Thompson shoots the ball. I mean, I think they're still head and shoulders above everybody <laughs> else. So I think guys are doing have to do a lot more. But I, I think, you know, NBA is going the right way. I mean, even with the Lakers moves, you got Philadelphia is another team to watch out for. They're young and up and coming. Um, so the Wizards, I hope they can get something together, maybe get another piece in there with John Wall. If not, you know, I love, I love John Wall, so I would like oh, yeah. to see him go somewhere else. Um, get him, maybe get him a victory if he can't do it with Washington. And then also, you know, Oklahoma City with Paul George, they're going to be very, very good this year. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. It's going to be some good basketball to watch this year. I think so, too. LJ, thanks so much, brother. Appreciate it, man.